So BIM 360. So in terms of the BIM approach, most of you have probably seen some of this information before. And what we're talking about is, you know, BIM is focused on getting productivity out of people, becoming more productive, doing things better, faster, less rework. The collaboration is working amongst different people, different teams, different backgrounds, from the field to the office, and being able to get insight from this, being able to understand and derive data. Now, a lot of the times when we're talking about BIM, we're talking specifically about the uh, design side. But again, it's something that encompasses the entire building life cycle. And today what we're going to be focusing more on is the construction side and how that kind of ties in to all the others. Now, one of the big things that we talk about when we look at uh, uh, BIM and its benefit is trying to avoid that sawtooth effect where we have to do something and then lose work and then start over again and we're losing time and we're losing money. One of the methods that we're going to see in terms of BIM 360 layout, how that really affects and comes in, is when we're working with design, if we have to redo something, yeah, it takes some time. But when you're working with something that was actually constructed and there's a problem, such as you know not having a door where it's supposed to be or not having a stair where it's supposed to be, the cost it takes and the time it takes to redo that is a lot more than if we're talking about on paper. So that's one of the reasons why we're really looking at a BIM 360 layout service, why that is important. It's trying to avoid these kind of issues. <coughs> now, in terms of BIM 360 overall, there's a large amount of tools. It's always growing. And we're focusing on these two in this case. So we're going to be looking a little bit at glue because layout essentially sits on top of glue in some of its use cases. We'll also mention a little bit about BIM 360 field down there because it actually can connect to layout in a couple of methods. Now, in terms of what's currently in use, more so in residential or small-scale construction, we'll see a lot of people using layout methods of batter boards. So they're going out there, they're staking out, they're taking regular measurements. And it's not a bad method. It's very useful. It can also be very accurate if you're putting a lot of effort into it. But it's not always the fastest, and coordinating changes aren't always the best. Similar when we're looking at plumb lines and tape. Also not always the easiest when you're working in a place that that's either a lot of windy, <laughs> has a lot of wind, or not great weather. And where most people are going, though, is some form of either lasers or using robots like from Topcon or Leica or Faro. And essentially, for those who haven't used these before, what happens is the laser actually shoots out of the device, connecting to that little prism. And that prism could be either connected to you know, a sign, like it is on the left-hand side, or held on a pole, similar to like you might see a walking stick. And that allows us to connect that data back to a smaller device that we can then utilize to coordinate back and forth. Now, most of the ones that are out there have their own software, but that software is designed to work with 2D applications, whether it's AutoCAD or their own specific things that can bring in DXF, which are simplified 2D exports from AutoCAD or even PDFs. Now, one of the things that we're trying to focus on here is why is this important? Well, we're looking at things like anchor bolts. You know, we want to make sure those are exactly where they need to be. Generally, we have tolerances in construction, but we want to make sure that we are within those tolerances. You know, we're looking at embeds for the actual columns and beams and locations and walls, making sure that where we say they're designed to be actually is where they end up being. And the same thing for penetration points. So when we're putting up hangers, especially in the above ceiling areas that are more and more congested and have a lot of things going on, we want to make sure that everything is being put in there once. It's where we said it was going to be. It's where we expect it's going to be. And especially pipe sleeves. This is going to come back a little bit later on in the presentation, but pipe sleeves tend to be one of the main use cases that a lot of people work with this, partially because it's something that's pretty easy to lay out but once it's been, once the floor or slab has been uh, placed, removing those, putting in new ones, that can get very time consuming and also very expensive. So, like anything else, measure twice, cut once, that kind of an idea. Now, the current methods that we look at, that we work with, they can be very time consuming. They can also be very labor intensive. You have to have a team of people out there setting things up and laying everything out. And also, it's hard to carry out like a, a central control point, especially if you're doing it with a bunch of ropes. Everything is sort of based off of the last thing, as opposed to everything being based off of one consistent uh, coordinate. 
And also, even with the lasers, if they're just going back to a basic 2D CAD floor plan, it's not really making its way back into a model. So if we're working with something like Revit, we're not ensuring that we're getting accurate as-builts. We have to kind of go and end run around things. So when we look at something like Autodesk uh, BIM 360 point layout, this is a tool that actually ties into a handful of different programs. So the screenshot you see over there, it's with Revit, but it also works inside of AutoCAD as well as Navisworks. Then you see also on the iPad there, there's a specific app that works for the layout portion of it. And that can either work with or replace those uh, specific devices that work with the, the, uh, the robots. So benefits of this is that it's going to make things a lot easier to coordinate. And you're establishing a project-wide control, so that way everything from one side of the building to the other side is all working off of this consistent coordinate point. And because we're using the uh, lasers for this, it tends to be very accurate. Now, in terms of how this actually works, <clears throat> nice thing is there's a couple of ways. It's not like, okay, well, if I'm going to start working with this, it has to be the specific way. So let's say their first project, you know, and all we're going to do is we're going to try layout, layout out and see how it works. So we'll start off in, say, Revit, in this case, and what we're going to do is we're going to put some points in on the model. We're going to say these are the locations that I feel are very important. These are the ones that we have to track out into the field and make sure are accurate. So from there, what we'll do is we'll take that points file well, from Revit, and we're going to export that out to a regular comma delineated file, just a little text file, basically. We'll bring that out into the field and plug that into the actual uh, robot. Once you've done that, that will allow us to shoot those locations. And then we can make sure that everything is in the exact same spot that we did in Revit. Pretty basic. Not that complex, we're just putting in specific points inside Revit. And then we sent it out to the field in a neutral file format. The nice thing about this is that you have that app that works for the iPad from Autodesk, but you don't have to use it. You can decide how much or how little you want to take advantage of the different aspects of this tool. So first project, we did this, it was pretty basic. We took the points, we sent it out in the field, and that actually made sure everything was correct. So what about the next one? Okay, well the next one, kind of the same idea. We're collecting the locations from the field. Maybe we're working on an existing building, and what we want to actually do is we want to get all those locations from the field, bring them back into the design model or even the, the construction model, and ensure that the dimensions that we had of that existing construction actually matches what we used. So from there, we'll take those points and we'll export them out from the devices in the field as, again, a CSV or a DXF or another point file. Because the nice thing is, the layout in Revit and AutoCAD and Navisworks, we can also import those points back in. It doesn't have to go through all of the Autodesk services. We can just import that point file as just a basic point file. Nothing big, nothing crazy. Bring that in, and then I can either see the points and manually c compare and contrast, or I can actually take advantage of the tools in there. And I'm going to show you a couple of those when we go through this bit but we can take advantage of those tools to, to automatically coordinate for us, too. Okay, so first two projects, we got under our belt. We're feeling really comfortable now. Let's start taking advantage of what the tool really can do. So now we're looking to actually compare and combine everything on BIM 360, as well as doing a little bit of QA and QC. So we've got all of our points in the, in the model, and whether it's Revit or AutoCAD or even Navisworks, that's not that big of a deal. But we're going to upload that to BIM 360 Glue. Now, the reason why we're going into Glue is because that Glue model can then sync to the BIM 360 layout service. So if you're using the iPad app, that can, act, that can connect remote, remotely to those devices. So I can actually run, in this case, the TopCon unit from the iPad. I don't have to use their proprietary stuff. That can manage that. That can pull in and look at the points from the model compare that out in the field with the points that they're finding, collect that, and send it back to Glue, which can then be brought right back into Revit. Now, once I've got those points in Revit, well, what do I do? Well, let's actually see where, they, where, where things are problems. So I take those in there, do a deviation analysis, essentially saying, okay, well, if I'm saying it's here, but when I look in the field, it's actually over here, there might be a problem with that. So now I need to say we need to look into this. I mentioned before that BIM 360 field would play a part in this. Again, it doesn't have to, but if you have access to field and glue, 
what this can actually do is send this and create tasks. So I can say that, okay, well, we've run this, we found that there's a problem. I'm actually going to use that to create an issue in the field, which can then sync to somebody out in the field with the app, and then they can actually go through and review that task. They can take care of that issue. They can say, okay, I've looked at this and I've inspected it and it's within tolerances, close that issue, and then the CM can actually look at the reports and confirm that everything is actually being checked on and the due diligence is being made. So you can see that when you're using the BIM 360 layout tool, it can be used in a couple of different methods and it doesn't have to ha be an all or nothing. You can just add it to your current workflow and take advantage of the 3D coordination that you can get from AutoCAD, Revit, or Navisworks. And what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to hop into one of those tools. 